Hi guys, so this is the first video I'm making with a different lighting. I don't know if this is any better or worse. I still gotta work with it. As far as uh, you guys know, I put in a new table, so things are a little different. I have things in front of me here that I want to review. So this is like the um, Diamond Press Holiday Kit, which is super cute. It has a little snowman, a little Christmas tree shaker card. Um, I think an ornament. And then I also wanted to do kind of a little follow-up or review of the We Are Memory Keepers tools that they had sold in a bundle like this on HSN. All these things came from HSN. But I have a feeling people are going to want to see the tassel loom or maybe the pom-pom maker. And I'm not really interested in making these things. You have to roll around and around. It's just like any other pom-pom maker. You can get them from like Clover or whatever yarn brand that you like. Um, or company that makes things like that. I don't think Clover's a yarn brand, but they make, you know, knitting and tools like that. And then this tassel loom, same thing. You're just going to go around and around and around with your little yarn. And then um, they include uh, this thing here that... I guess it just helps you with it to, to, when you open it up and know where the middle part is, is what it looks like. Maybe it's for the end. I don't know. On that one, maybe that one's worth trying out. But really, I just want to try the ribbon maker for you guys because it's flat. And I thought, well, how are you going to hold this down and finagle it? So this is really what I wanted to review, but I'll put that to the side for now. Today, we're going to use these um, dies from um, Anna Griffin. Oh, that shadow drives me nuts. I'm going to try to block it out. Maybe I'll open this other window and maybe I'll knock it out. I don't know. It might make it worse. Okay, so we have the um, Christmas character decoupage dies. And she calls them decoupage dies. They have a couple layers. They don't have a ton of layers. So we're going to have to do some fun things. I think I'm going to use the ballerina because she's the cutest, of course. Um, and might be the trickiest to use because she only has a dress layer and a bow. So to make more layers, you're going to maybe run this through, cut it out, you know, let it cut out as a base separate from like the skin base, you know, so we'll talk about that in a minute. The Nutcracker or Soldier or whatever, well, I guess he's Nutcracker. Um, he does have his little coat, his little boots and his hat. And what she did, what I've noticed a lot of times is she'll run this through like a beige color or something. And then she, before she takes that off, she uses ink to color all these areas that you see. So that gives a second kind of dimension to it. So when you put the little coat over this, the coat also cuts out these little areas. You'll see the ink coming through. Plus here he has like a beige or whatever color you use for the, you know, main layer. So um, same thing with the boots. Um, you'll see this other color coming through out of here. So same thing with the little guy, anything like that. It's going to be something similar. And then I figured um, I want to try the rosettes for you guys because I want to see how easy they are to use. She recommends using um, like text white paper. So basically like layering paper, like thin layering paper. But a lot of her examples, I don't know if you notice, are on like metallic paper because they look awesome. So, you know, so I'll use layering because that's what she says. Um, there is a sheet in here with just some pictures. And basically it's just going to be your basic sandwich. And it's just saying to cut them. It doesn't even talk about... Um, embossing so I don't, which I was kind of curious about because see this is the thing her new mat I think will also it might emboss at the same time so what happens guys I don't know I don't have the new mat yet that looks like an embossing no that's the die um we'll see what happens if the lines show up well enough we won't em use the rumber embossing mat but if they don't then we're gonna have to do that because these guys cut the rosette and all these little lines here is where you're gonna fold them now I'll probably use the smaller rosette because it's one card and these other ones are pretty good size. And they have like little toppers to top them off so they look nice and neat in the center. And as the base of the card, I'm going to use these holiday concentric dies. This is an auto ship that she had on HSN. Sorry, these right here were called snowflake rosette dies, which is kind of obvious, right? So these guys I got on auto ship and these were not a horrible price. I think they were very well priced indeed. And even though I like the holly and different things, this also has ornaments. I didn't really notice that. Well, not also, because these are bells. I love the bell one. So I'm definitely going to cut this out, emboss it, and then cut out the outer frame so that it makes a frame. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is select some papers, some inks, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I think we'll start with the ballerina. And basically, I just went and went through my paper. I found a little kind of tannish paper. It's kind of a weird color, but it's okay. It's just Recollections brand. And then I got some gold from the um, Anna Griffin paper it's gold foil it's not that shiny like this one this is the uh, crafters companion purple and i had scraps of this stuff so i think i'll use those so what we're going to do first is run our little gal through and you can run you know maybe i'll do the purple dress at the same time because there's obviously we can fit more things on here so here's my a plate 
Here's the magnetic mat. I was watching Anna Griffin doing some things the other day and she cuts into this magnetic mat. She puts the paper and she put the die facing down, which I've never seen her do. And I was like, what is that? And it wasn't the black mat, it was this mat. <laughs> so I don't know, but you guys know I don't like putting my stuff around the mat because of the way it dents it up that way. So I'm gonna put this foil, not the foil, but the metal shim. And we'll put that in and we'll see about, maybe I'll put it this way. And then we'll see about cutting out the little purple dress at the same time. And I guess, you know what, I'll do the purple bow at the same time too, because that's also going to be purple. So let me grab the little bow. So I have the bow, her dress. I'm going to put the foil facing down because I want it to face the cutting edge here. And then our other A plate. It does not look like there's anything on here that needs to be embossed, like rubber embossing, because basically everything gets cut out. Um, so I'm going to run this through my Empress, which actually I have set up here on the floor for some reason. So in front of me, I have my Gemini Junior. You guys saw the video of how I set this up now. But if I'm using the Empress, I just set it up anywhere else on the little table somewhere else. All right. So here's our little gal. And I need to put her back actually into this because we're going to do some inking. Now she does have places that you can embossed if you want. So see everything you see here? That can all be embossed. So that adds another layer of color. Um, not a lot of it's going to show up because I'm going to put the gold dress. We're going to cut her dress out again. And then, so I'm not going to do anything like that. But if you just wanted this and then this layer as they were intended, well, not really intended. You can do whatever you want. Ah. I want you to see how you can see through the purple you know area into here so if you want to color that different color right on her little um what you just cut out that's fine uh do whatever you like but i'm gonna put this and we're gonna cut her out again especially this well just in gold because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use the gold base and the gold dress but we're just gonna snip it so that it fits underneath this and underneath this we'll talk about that in just a second but we're gonna have to um again maybe we will emboss her just so it pops a little bit plus the let me see, hold on. Actually, it doesn't make sense because like I said, we're gonna do the dress, but her hair and stuff can be rubber embossed. So let's do that just so you can see what that would look like if that's what you wanna do. Get rid of these two mats and I'll put her cutting edge face down into the rubber embossing mat. So it's just your A plate, rubber embossing mat, her facing down. If you think it's gonna shift out of place, you can glue it down, not glue it, tape it, sorry. And I'm gonna run this through and then your A plate again. The only thing about the Empress is I wish it would just run when you put the paper there, like know that it's there, but it doesn't, so. All right, I want you to see the embossing effect you're gonna get from that. Oh goodness, come on. Oopsie. Really cute. But, and then if you had your little purple dress, again, if you had the ink, that ink will be showing through in these areas, okay? For right now, what we're gonna do is, I should have grabbed the inks, <laughs> is she needs like a hair color, and it's not gonna matter for me if it gets everywhere. I'm just gonna go with black, to be honest, because her eyes, you know, the little eyelashes can be black, and then that little bit of nose, I guess we can, or that's actually her mouth, I guess we could do that one in kind of a pink or red. Let me, where's my ink? This is the first video I've made since I <laughs> rearranged everything, and it's right next to me, of course, but I'm like, where is everything? Um, let's see. So this is just some ink, I mean, it doesn't matter, just a black ink, whatever you want to use. I'm just gonna take this little sponge, and yes, I did order some, uh, what's those things called? Finger daubers on AliExpress, because people were recommending that I should do that. And I'm gonna try to be careful not to get into that little red spot where her mouth should be red. But I'm going to color this in. So this is basically gonna color in her hair for you. And the eyes really get in there. Okay. And, oh, and you know what, her little shoes. Oh, you can also just run this foot part again and like something. Since I'm gonna cut her out in gold again, it's possible I could do gold shoes. But I think, no. So let me <laughs> grab some red ink. That's a lot of detail and we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff today, so I'm just gonna move on. But where is, okay. 
this is kind of a good system. Right behind me, I have all my inks. I just grab my red, China red, or Crafter's Companion. Just get a little on here. And this time it shouldn't, well, unless it shifts like it did. Hold on. I might have to go over the black again because I think she was just a little off centered when I first did it. Oh no. That's not good. Okay, well, I'm just going to dab in her little mouth. Her little mouth might be a little bit off center from her, <laughs> her hair and stuff because this has shifted a little bit. Oh, that's so cute. I don't know how I got more red ink underneath. It kind of messed up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to run through the gold with the full dye um, because I'm going to cut, snip her dress away. I'm going to snip her little hair bow away and then we're going to layer all that up. Okay, so that just popped out. Let me just move some of these things to the side. Actually, we can get rid of pretty much everything. I just want to make sure where's her bow. There it is. Again, you can rubber emboss this, but I think it was probably thick enough that it kind of did its own little embossing a little bit here on the sides. But you can run it through again. And then we're going to get that little gold lady that we just popped out. And we're going to cut her up just a little bit. Let me put that there. Let's not lose any of these pieces. <laughs> Bow. Dress. Alright. Oh, little lady. I think we're done with her for now. Let me move all this stuff to the side. Let me actually sit down. That might be nice. And let me bring this a little bit closer. Okay. So we have our base lady. We have her little dress. We have her little bow. Oh, I totally forgot to emboss the feet. Like I told you, I was gonna emboss her feet, but I'll do that later <laughs> with maybe a purple uh, ink or something. So basically I want her dress, okay? So I'm gonna get, actually I want her bow too. So um, I'm gonna cut around here cause we just want to snip away her little arms and snip it away from the bow too. And this is just to go under that purple. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you do want the edges not to show, but you stick out from back there. Oh, you see what I'm doing? I'm just snipping these things away. Oops, actually, we need to cut that one. And just in through here. I hope. <laughs> um, this isn't going to take too long. I mean, there's a lot going on. So basically, my idea was to put this here. And then we're going to pop the little purple top part on top of that, right? So let me think about her dress. Hmm. I think I need to cut this all the way down to her little neckline. All the way down. And then if we need to make adjustments, I'll do that. I just don't know exactly what's going to show through this area. And then this can also just be trimmed off in a way that looks natural. See what I'm saying? So we're going to stick that down here and then we're going to stick this on top of that. Oh, so cute. Hey, that came out perfectly. Oh my gosh, I barely just missed this little gold right here and I can go in there and divot that out, but I'm not going to. That's fine. So when you cut it, oh, what I want you to see is that she has like a little decolletage area here. <laughs> Let's focus. So when you're cutting, cut down into here and cut it close to this little divot area that's there and then back up. Okay. So let's try to do this. Let me make this a little nicer. All I'm going to do is glue this down and glue the gold piece down with some... Where are my glues? <laughs> Got to find where everything's kind of repositioned. Um, I'll just use... This is just the tacky glue that you know comes from a bigger bottle and I put into this little precision bottle. I always want to say close to my heart from Crafter's Companion. And I'm going to glue that down and I'll do the same thing with the dress and I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to stick down the purple layer. Now you could have totally stuck the purple to the gold and then popped them both up with dimensional adhesive, whatever you like. It makes it look a little more um, decoupage-ish, I guess. I'm not going to pop any of this. I mean, you can pop this one too. Just put the little tiny adhesives back there and do as well as you can up here. And this will kind of pop up, but I'm just going to glue it down. So um, I guess less decoupage because you really want some dimension, I would assume. But uh, 
Again, do whatever you like. We have a lot going on with the rosettes. Why is this piece? Okay, fine. There's a piece that's just stuck there. I'm just going to leave it. And we're going to glue this down. And then I'll do the same thing for the bow and just glue it over that gold area there. And I'm going to stick this down here. And I'll be right back as soon as I'm done with that. Okay, so here she is. We're going to put her to dry. Super cute. Again, I'll come in and do some inking around her little feet. If you're really good, you know, you can cut around this little... So this little gold thing here and put those on as her shoes. Um, whatever you like to do. Super cute. I did like the way her little hair turned out. I thought she was going to be super crooked because of the way I didn't notice that the dye had shifted, but it's not bad. She's a little, a little imperfect and that's okay. Um, okay, so let's see. We need to cut. Let's do the rosette and then we'll do the background because the background is going to be easy, pretty easy. You're just going to run it through and then cut the frame out. So let's see. Where are my rosettes? Okay, so this is the thing with the rosettes, is that you will need extended cutting plates, which just kind of made me realize that the uh, Gemini Junior doesn't have extended cutting plates, does it? Like, you can use the small Junior plates in your large Gemini, and then the large Gemini has large plates anyway, but they should make some extended ones for the Gemini Junior. Why not? Everybody has that. Like, it kind of surprises me. So I wanted to see if even the smallest rosette would fit on the regular plates. Let me see how far I can pan up here without looking, without having everybody seeing the, uh, <laughs> my tripod here. Um, it will cut the smaller one. Okay, these are just the regular plates. But the long one definitely needs the extended cutting plates unless you want to run it through and then just reposition it and run the rest of it through. I am only going to use a small one though today because I, I don't want to sit here and just make rosettes all day. So I'm going to put this on here. Cut this out on paper. Oh, you know what? I didn't even choose paper for this. What do we, let's see, what do I have here? I have some scraps that I just put in the packaging that I had for my Anna Griffin from the last time I made an Anna Griffin like Christmas card. This is not Anna Griffin paper by any stretch of the imagination. It's pretty paper. But you know what? I have this strip right here that's really pretty and I think it'll work. So I have my A plate, I have my magnetic, I have the metal shim. I have this piece of paper I'm going to put here. I'm going to cut it. Let's see how long this has to be. I'm going to have to cut some of the edges to make it work, but eh, it might go through. <laughs> Let's see if I can... I want it to be kind of straight. Okay. And then the other A plate, wherever I put it, I'm going to run it through my machine and I will be right back. Okay, and while I did that, I totally forgot about these little topper pieces. We could have done that. And I think this, since it's small, I'll probably just run this through in gold and then emboss it because it does have like a little area that can be embossed. So I'll run that through. Same, you know, sandwich as always. But let's see what this looks like. Oh, okay. Okay, so this, so it's almost a cardstock weight, right? It's like thinner than die cuts with a view. I don't remember exactly where that paper came from. I might've mentioned in the last video, but I can see looking at this that all the little lines the scoring, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's like the smallest area behind my hand that wants to focus there. You can see all those little score marks, right? So, what we're going to do... You guys, I kind of like my new setup. I'm getting used to it, but I, mean, I might not know where my stuff is for a second, but I do like this. Okay, um, so what I want you to notice also is, okay, see how it's taller and then shorter and all that? So when you go through and you start to do your work... These little guys are going to get folded, but they're going to stick out. They're going to kind of fan out. So it's going to be, it's, it's going to have a lot of texture to it. It's really pretty. Now, I don't know if it matters if I start going forward or backwards. I feel like these guys have to come forward anyway. So the one next to it over here should go back, forward, back. I guess it depends on what you're looking for. So I start off with a fat back fold, then forward. And you just keep going, right? You're just going to mountain and valley fold these. And I guess if you don't like that, then go the other way. <laughs> but the one I chose to do, I like it. And it is folding relatively easily on those score marks. And that was without rubber embossing, so that's good. All right, well, I'm going to continue. It is getting harder as I'm getting further into this. But maybe I should start letting it go instead of... So the line on these longer ones does go a little bit further up. Oh, this is kind of a pain. I wonder if those super long ones are... <laughs> I'm just going to do sections at a time. I hope you can see that. 
I'm kind of letting this go and then I'll do this next part. And it is a little bit harder to fold where there's like foiling. Probably because there's foiling, so it keeps it kind of thick. Alright, well I'm going to go through the whole thing forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, leaving pieces behind here. And I will be right back. Okay, so there are no instructions here on where the ends, how to put it together. There's just some pictures. That's to say these things, since that one time that she didn't even put one in with the snow globes, um, they don't matter. <laughs> like there are other ones where she describes a lot. This thing says nothing other than, you know, how to basically run it through. Oh, well, you know, what? I wonder what color. Oh, no, is that the other one? This looks like she's painted it. But remember, I tried to use um, ink on this paper and it totally was like running all over the place because it's not porous. But anyway, this is our little guy. So I'm going to try to give it some really good, just give it a once over as far as how these guys are bending and folding. And I guess we're going to have to get it together like this. Now, I guess the other thing you could do is stick it together this way, right? And then invert it. I'm just trying to see if you're supposed to stack these together, like one on top of the other to, for, to end it. They're exactly the same, so maybe that's... And then push them in towards each other. Or are you supposed to, <laughs> like I did at the beginning, kind of go like this. This is a pain. You guys already know I'm kind of impatient, but here. I, I hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of pushing it together and getting it into a circle shape. You see that? I'm going to hold it there. That looks better, and then... If you really get it close, maybe you don't have to get those together, but it looks like you do have to pair it up because at the end of this, you have two of these short ones together and that's not what we want. So I have a feeling you are supposed to stack one on top of the other. So I'm going to get some glue on here and hopefully this is not a disaster, but I'm going to get the glue on this one. Kind of a, a good amount of glue because I want it to stay together, obviously. And that's what I say. You can do a ring and then flatten it if that's easier and it might be, but you can also just... Uh, do what I did and at the very end just to get those together and hold them. So I'm going to hold this together till it's all stuck together and I will be right back. So you see it makes a little ring and I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that and then flatten it out. All right. It's not quite dry yet, but I think it's workable as you can see it's not coming apart. So I have it facing down. See all those little pretty things facing down and all I'm going to do is push into it and f push it down so it gets flat. Do you guys see that? And I'm assuming you can get it a little bit closer. Yeah. I was going to say this is kind of far apart. I'm pushing it towards the center. How cute is that? And then I want this little guy basically to hold that down. So I think I'm going to use the same glue because it dries fast and I want that. But at the same time, I think some Kolal, maybe that thick, thick kind will help. I'm going to put quite a bit of glue, as you can see. I'm going to try to make this not very messy. I'm going to try to get it together, push it together, push it together until it's not really pushing together anymore. This is so crazy. And maybe I should use the larger middle but supposedly it is for this one so i'm kind of holding it together hope you can see that and i'm gonna squish that down and i'm just gonna sit here and hopefully i can turn off the camera <laughs> until it doesn't move anymore now having said that you could cut out a circle like a one inch circle from a punch and stick that on the bottom so that helps hold it together too from the back side um i've never really made these before so i'm just kind of winging it but that's you know just how you make flowers like single petal flowers you just cut out you can fussy cut a circle and just stick this on there so it sticks it together in the back but i'm gonna hold this until it dries and hopefully it does not move for you guys i'm not trusting this that much because i've been holding this for a long time and i feel like it's still not look at this so i am gonna just fussy cut something that's smaller than obviously that middle because you don't want it to stick out but and i'm gonna bring out the big guns this kolal glue <laughs> which is just like a beacons three in one type glue. And I'm going to put quite a bit and then I'm going to hold this down just like we did on here and push it together and keep the top down too. And as you're doing this, you can also kind of look at it and make sure it's how you want, you know, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to hold this down for lots of minutes, you guys, <laughs> and I'll be back. Okay. Well, I'm still waiting for that to dry. I put a thing on top of it and kept it kind of close because I was like, just sit there. And I totally realized I misplaced this larger one. It fell off. Um, so th there are two sizes of the star one. So I guess I would probably go with larger, but then you're going to cover a lot of your rosette. So that's up to you. Maybe I should have used both of those. So it's not 
you know, anything that she did here or that's not easy to use. I should have gone with um, a larger center. And I might still do that. I might still have Look at that. It's still not dry. Oh my gosh. This is a nightmare. <laughs> this is why I don't do stuff like this. It's cute. It's effective. I think it's lovely. Um, maybe I will go ahead and cut out this larger center in a red and then put that on top to help with some of that. But I'm just going to stick this on here for now. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. I will, well, you know what? I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to let it dry. <laughs> and then, uh, just so you know, there is a larger one that kind of helps you do that. And then maybe you do want to reinforce at the bottom like I did also. But I'm going to put this to the side and get the card base cut out. And I'll be right back to show you those papers. Okay, just a quick note. I try to move this off of here and the paper was stuck to this, not because of the glue. It just is so wet with glue. So I'm holding in my hand. I'm just going to blow on this thing until it stops moving. Now, having done this, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe next time we use hot glue. Okay, <laughs> put a little hot glue and you're going to be good because it's just going to hold it and you're done. And this is ridiculous for this little piece of decoration. But if you guys have a better way of making your rosettes, let me know what you use, what glue you use because I'm sure it'll help everybody else that's watching it. As far as the um, tutorial part of, you know, folding this thing up, I think we're good. So I started off folding this in a valley fold because I, I like this to look like that. If you wanted it up, then start off with the mountain fold on that and then, you know, fold the rest of it back and forth, back and forth after one of those pieces. Um, I, I like the look of this one, so it's kind of opening up this way. But if you want to point it up again, fold it the opposite way and then keep going through your rosette. Okay. Um, I'll be back when this All is dry. Right, guys. So we have this little guy. Finally, it looks like he will stay no worse for the wear, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna put him over here and I'm still going to put something on top just in case I don't want it falling apart. And then I colored her little shoes in with purple. It's really, really deep purple. So super cute. And so now we're just going to cut out the, uh, frame. So I have these two and I, Oh, I'm sorry. I want to do these guys. And I think even though you can do, well, we're going to do rubber embossing on this. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to cut them out at the same time like this. So you can make the whole frame just like this. Let me back up a little bit and you can have a blackout. So I'm going to do a blackout. So just this on this red paper, that's really a nice deep red. I'm going to put a die just like I've been doing everything else. Let me grab my a plate, magnetic mat, metal shim, die facing up. Okay, and then I'll use this piece of paper and I'll just probably tear it through here. I used to always watch Stephanie Bernard do that. I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. She just rips it off the side of the uh, thing if you want to bring out the cutting tool. And then a plate again. I'm going to run it through and I'm not embossing this or anything because it's just the frame and then we'll do something fancier with the gold on the okay, top part. So that one is done. Just this outer part. Now you can always just, okay, well, what we're going to do right now is also the same thing, but with this guy in here. Now this holds it pretty good. I don't think it's going to shift, but if you think it's going to shift, you know, you're going to want to put some tape, tape it to your paper and then put it down. I don't think it's going to move. I'd be surprised if it did, but you know, stranger things have happened. Um, I'm going to use gold paper on this, that same foil paper. I don't think in this kit, I, let me see. I think it's like a four by six piece. So that outer frame I just cut isn't really an outer frame. Oh, this is interesting. This just covers it. All right. <laughs> So I'm going to use that. Um, it's just a kit I picked up at HSN. So it has five by sevens and 12 by 12 pieces of that gold foil paper. This really is just to give it some color in the background. It's not going to give it an edging, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I wanted that in the back. So I'm going to run this through exactly the same and I'll come back when we have to do the embossing. Oh, you guys, that was super dangerous. Only because I do know sometimes things do move and shift and uh, it's kind of scary. But anyway. Oh, you know what? I didn't have, well, okay. Now I see how to use it. <laughs> I didn't have to do this outer frame on this one because duh, it has a cutting line. Huh, that's too funny. So do not mount these up together. 
I hope that makes it clear. I'm sorry. I didn't notice that this one had a cutting line already on its own. Cause that's why I was like, how's that going to be a shadow layer? If So I put them together. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Cause it might be uh, something where it shifts and it's going to mess up your machine possibly. So don't do that. Don't use this piece with this guy. You can just run him through and he's still going to cut out his piece just like this. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to waste your time or confuse you there, but okay. So this actually has a really good embossing already, probably because I had so much stuff going through it, but we can line this back up in here, get rid of these two, only use our A plate, bring over the embossing mat. My only problem with this is that the embossing mat does squeeze out and it does shift your paper a lot of times. So then it kind of looks wonky. But if you can get this in here, if you want to put some tape to help you hold it down, that's great too. But hopefully that's in there just the way it was. Hopefully you see that. And then put our A plate. So A plate, rubber embossing mat, die face down with the paper still in it. And I'm going to run this through my machine again. I'll just do it right now because it shouldn't take too long. And whenever I do something like that, I always hold on to the, the plates really well until it starts taking it into the machine. That way it doesn't really shift. Because sometimes the machine will make like a little movement and it, uh, it'll shift your papers. So, I think that's pretty good. Oh, ooh, look how much better that embossing is. Of course, it's lovely. The other thing that's really cute on here, I think, for her would be to cut out this really girly kind of frame right here. It has like little bows. How cute is that to put that behind her and this? But we're just trying out these few things. I want to kind of get this done because I have so many more things to review for you guys. It's crazy. <laughs> I was like, oh, here's my frame. This is not the frame. It was just the paper. So sorry. I didn't mean to confuse anybody about that. Okay. I guess we're ready to put this together, even though I probably would still go with a few more things, but that's okay. All right. Now, here's our base. And Anna always likes to pop things, so maybe what I should do is pop this up. Um, <laughs> I used to have a bunch of dimensional adhesives right here next to me, but I put them in a basket on this other side, so now I know that's a bad idea. Or not the best idea. Eh, let me grab some. These are kind of small. Ugh. Let me grab some other pieces. Everything I was getting was tiny, which would be good for some items, but this no, not so much. So I have these larger pop dots. I think these came from Diamond Press whenever they sent them to me a long time ago to review on my old channel. And I would do a better job, like put maybe a lot more so that it doesn't end up folding or bending your card. You know what I'm saying, when it gets squished on top. So you want to put plenty so it keeps it popped up. And I normally don't try to do, I try to do this off camera. I probably should have done this, sorry. Take off these little guys. Oh, <laughs> when I was doing my remake in here in my room, my little remodel, um, I popped off a couple of my diamonds on my hand. So I've already switched those out. Okay, I should have looked at this and made sure that these were the same. Hmm. This looks better. Yeah, it probably goes like this. Okay. And I would lay this flat. Start sticking these down. This might be the same all around. I can't really tell. Oh, and by the way, go ahead and stick this down to a five by seven card. <laughs> I haven't done that part. I never stick it onto a card base, you guys. I have some right there, right in front of me. White card bases are five by seven, but. Anyway, then we're going to have our little gal and I'll probably pop her up and she has a bunch of gold. That's what I was saying. Maybe it'd be cuter to put something else behind her to kind of make the difference. And also my card is very red and gold when she's wearing purple because, you know, she's like a little sugar plum. But, um, you know, it's up to you. Let's say we put that there and let's say we put this here. And I think, oh, I would have loved to pop her up. I'm trying to think if I want to put something behind her to differentiate her a little bit. I might go ahead and cut out that frame in red, even though she's not even close to wearing red. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out that cute little frame and okay. I'll wear it. I just finished embossing that. Now, you know, this one also has an inner frame that you can cut out, like another piece that layers into this. But, you know, like I said, I just wanna try it out just to differentiate her from that background. But there was, could be another piece that if you wanna do that, you can definitely do that. I think I'm gonna stick this down because this is already popped up. You can pop this up too. There's a lot of popping up. So I think I'm just gonna glue this down though. So let me get some of this stuff here. So this one's gonna be flat. 
kind of cute if you gave it a little dimension by popping up the little bows, maybe. Not sticking them down. I guess this could be right in the center. I was going to put it down lower, but you know what? That works out really lovely. And this kind of has a pattern to it, so I figured instead of just being flat red like that back paper. And we're going to pop her up, of course. Okay, let me get pop dots on the back of her, and um, I'm not sure how we're going to use the snowflake yet. And I'll be right back. I'm to take this last one off. And I just realized I remembered my husband bought the kids Aladdin, the live action one with Will Smith and that crew this weekend. Oh my gosh, I love it. I didn't want to watch it because <laughs> I love Aladdin the first one. I mean, Robin Williams, how can you do any better than that, right? But um, it was really good. I liked it. I liked a lot of it. But um, tell me what you guys think if you've watched it. So I put, you know, some pop dots here. And I guess I'll just put her right in the center, which she is adorable. Oh my goodness. How cute. And then we have our big, I don't know if I'm going to use this on here. I think I don't need to, but if I did, I can put it like in there somewhere, right? Maybe a little, that's actually still really big for being the smallest one. Um, that's a good size piece. So just know they're, they're, they're big. I mean, look at this thing. Let me see. It is, uh, let's see. We have one, two, it's two and a half inches. It's cute. Let me put it down here. I'd rather put it up here though. I don't know. Anyway, I'll have pictures for you guys. If I stick that down, you know it'll be there. And I will put this on a <laughs> five by seven card base so that maybe I'll actually use it this Christmas. But um, tell me what you guys think. Thanks for hanging in there. We tried out lots of different things. I look forward to getting the next um, auto deliveries of those frames. I love the way everything has a mat and a layer. Like it's, it's great. Sorry that I put those two things together. I mean, you can definitely do that. There's no reason to do that <laughs> because it already has a cutting edge, but um, I, 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 would, I, I would not do it because you don't want to mess up your, if your machine shifts and this thing, you know, the outer one, just don't, there's no reason to um, on this one. There are other items where you do need the frame because let's say it doesn't cut out that outer edge and you can work with those that way. But they usually, uh, you know, you, you just have to tape it down so it doesn't shift. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll have pictures for you. I'm going to move on to the next thing, which is probably, like I said, that bow maker or um, the little shaker cards, whatever it is. I'm going to get to it. Thanks for watching. This is adorable. I love it. And I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.